Hello, I'm back with my big grey beard. God, that was had about one grey hair this time last year. <laughs> anyway, I'm back um, to do what we've been doing. Uh, keep you updated with our animation journey. And I thought some of you might be interested in how we animate um, our cartoon digital puppets. I'm not going to do a big massive video. It's just going to be a little bit of a snapshot of how we work. Um, because as you may know, we deal with motion capture um, and we use this approach so that we can turn around animations really quickly. We basically embed all the expressions into the model um, and then yeah, we operate it like a muppet, uh, not a muppet, <laughs> a puppet, well, same thing, both of them. Um, and I'm just going to show you quickly how that works. So what I've done is, as you can see here, this is a list of all the different animated triggers so I've got four facial um, triggers so you know, that's the full face one or I can just trigger individual layers but it would take too long to be going through hitting buttons like this and really this is just when you're wanting to operate a puppet in real time um, but when you're animating it you want a quicker kind of drop and drag um, approach so as you can see down here we got all these swap sets and you can see we've got mouth triggers eyelid triggers and all you do is you bring in your audio and you drop it on the timeline and then i'm just gonna have to make sure i've got the lip sync um activated so i've got that on here i'm gonna pick the audio pick my puppet go to the timeline and automatically um, do a lip sync And as you can see here, it's giving me all the vitamins. Uno! 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 Now it's not perfect. Um, all it does really is it speeds up the whole process. Because as many of you animators out there will know, um, you know, animating lip sync can often take, you know, it's a whole bloody task in itself. So basically this just speeds up a little bit. You got the automatic lip sync, but I don't, you know, just do the um, do that and then leave it. I do clean it up. I go through it. Um, I swap out any vitamins that I don't think are correct. Um, I also add in, you know, like at the moment, so that it's snappy. These vitamins are cutting out um, as soon as the other one comes in. But when you finish the end of a sentence, I don't want the mouth to just snap back to nothing. I want it to animate out. So I'll go along and let's see that last one there is up. So I'll get rid of that. And then I'm going to drop in that instead. So just Uno. So that the mouth basically at the end of that line animates back to the default. Anyway, that's just the lip syncing. And then, you know, as we go along, However, the character, you know, if he's happy, if he's sad, I can just go along the timeline here and drop in whatever expressions or, you know, for example, if he's sad, I might go for lower eyelids and I'll stress that for however long I want him to be looking like that. And then my eyebrows, I can go for cross. And then I can quickly drop in some arm expressions. Um, I'll just go to um, activate the dragger. So I'll put them up there. Record two takes. Zoom in. And so I don't have to keep doing that every time. If it's a particular, you know, arm expression, as people do, you know, like, normally it's like mid, high, low, and different variations. But I can do them a couple of times. I can save them. So I'll go right click, uh, create replay trigger. And then I'll go down here and you can, well, you can see I've already got a bunch saved already. And I can just literally copy and paste into the timeline. All of this really speeds up the process. 
Um, when I'm working with clients, I can do some, you know, I can make, for example, I've worked on an animation yesterday. It was a three minute animation, multiple characters, and I got it animated in two hours. Now, it was a pretty simple animation. The artwork looked really nice, so it looked detailed. I added motion capture to the scenery, so there's a lot going on. I added a camera dynamic, so, you know, you got lots of cuts. But the characters are relatively simple. I put on the lip sync. I added in a few basic expressions, and that was it. Now, the customer can come back to me and they can say, well, we want more expressions, so I'll spend another hour and I'll add in more expression details or I might add in a few more, you know, detailed movements. We can be built up. And that's what we're doing with our own project. And it just gives us the ability to turn around the cartoon really quickly. But I still think it looks really nice because we've already prepped, all, you know, we've already made all them facial animations. And we've already made all them body animations. And all it is, is just dragging and dropping them on, and you can very quickly turn around a cartoon. Does it look the same quality as a Disney animated movie, or even a TV show that's got a fortune spent on it? No, I'm not saying it does. But does it look nice? Will it entertain the kids? Yes, most of the cartoons I watched when I was a child, um, things like Rhubarb and Custard, or Penny Crayon, they were great. They're still my favourite cartoons. Were they animated in the best way possible? No. Some of them were um, little more than motion capture comics. You know, you had your artwork. There was some blinking. There was some animation. There was some arm movement. That was it. But they were still great cartoons. And that is what we're going for. And we're going to infuse this with also the 3D environments as well to give it an even, you know, extra bit of panace. Anyway, I'm going to pause this now, and then I'm going to show you the animation, how I've done it. And then in the next part, we'll get Anthony to show you how he puts that into a 3D Unreal environment. Hello, I'm back. And yes, I've got a haircut, you know, in the space of pausing it and starting again. Um, I ended up getting distracted, so I didn't actually start animating this until actually a few days later. Anyway, I just wanted to give you a quick look um, at what I've done. Um, obviously in the first part I showed you me putting in all the swap sets and as you can see here I've very quickly been dropping in all the different eyelids and mouths and whatnot so let's have a quick look it's not finished yet so I'm just showing you how it is in progress Uno! 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 You shouldn't be hiding out in the woods! It's really really unsafe out here! There's dangerous creatures everywhere! <laughs> like that. Right, so what I've been doing so far is just the expressions. And at the beginning there was a slight amount of, you know, putting a little bit of a walk and first bit of arm action. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to add in, use motion capture just to add in some body spray, some face turning because I've got the whole parallax um, 2.5D face set up. I'm going to add in some more arm gestures because, you know, that is expression as well as what you're doing with your face. Um, and then that's it, really. I do have to do a little bit where Uno pops up in the middle because I'm going to have a pop up. The camera's going to be from Uno's point of view, watching her dad, you know, looking for him, freaking out because she's hiding. And then it's going to cut to her for a second. So you're going to cut to the dad's point of view and she's going to be popping up and say it's a little two second piece. And then it's going to cut back to dad. Um, so yeah, I'll be back in a second. Right, I'm just going to show you this one little instance on mocapping. So basically I've dragged his leg up into place and his arms into place. And I just want him kind of like, ah, so it's just going to add some like head shake and like leaning back a little bit. I'm just going to press record. <laughs> like and that's it. Just that one little shot there, so I'm going to blend it in. Like that. That's it. That's a little shot. I'll be back in a minute and I'll show you how the rest of it's looking. Right, I'm back. Hang on, let me just deactivate that. Right, I think I've got this... Um, all sorted now um, again this is all done with motion capture some draggers and my ready-made um, 
you know, pre-made animations so that I can quickly knot this together. I've done this in, I don't know, an hour or so. I could have done it a lot quicker. Um, you know, a lot of the animations I see on YouTube for these kids' channels, they're like, you know, quite basic. Um, but I do like to go over the top and add in a lot more expressions with the changes of the cadence of his voice and whatnot. But, you know, that's just me going over the top. Anyway, let's have a quick look and see how it, you know, is performing. Uno! 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 You shouldn't be hiding out in the woods! It's really, really unsafe out here! There's dangerous creatures everywhere! Ah! Like that big monster behind you, Daddy. <sighs> yes, Uno, like the scary monster behind me. Right, so that's pretty much it. I've just got to do the Uno bit and then I can send it all over to Anthony and he'll show you how he gets it all put together in Unreal. Um, so my idea, and you can see whether or not this happens or not, is that the camera is going to be from Uno's point of view, watching the dad. So you're going to you know, have that sway as if it's a real person's point of view. And then it's going to cut back to the dad. And then at the end here, when he does his big screen... We'll have um, a big zoom in on his face, so his face builds the um, screen. And basically what's happening is that he thinks Uno is winding him up. And Uno saying, you know, there's a big monster behind him. But what you're going to see is like a big shadow looming up behind him. And as he turns around, he's obviously looking at what he's seeing and he's freaking out. Um, so, yeah, that's how I've animated my little scene in Adobe Character Animator. Um, obviously, you could also use a program like um, Real Illusion Cartoon Animator 5. That's also very, very good. I do use that as well. Um, cart um, Character Animator is a program I've been using for years, though, and it's one I'm very familiar with and I can um, use very quickly. But I am also going to be looking at Cartoon Animator 5 to do a lot more with because there are a lot of new features coming into that that are really exciting. Um, but I'll, if I animate something else with that program, then I'll do a video on that. Anyway, that's all from me. Um, and I'll be back soon with some more behind the scenes video on our cartoon production of Uno. Bye.